Do you want to know the whole truth about cholesterol? What is the biggest myth about cholesterol and what causes a high cholesterol in your blood? Are saturated fats to blame? Whatever the title is, today we'll bust some myths about cholesterol and spill some unquestionable facts. Are you ready? Throughout the years, discussion about cholesterol was very heated. Foods like eggs, bacon, dairy, cream, cheese, red meat, coconut oil, basically saturated fat were to blame. You were told that because of the intake of these products, your cholesterol rises and then it clogs your arteries, forming a plaque. Then the plaque rupture creating a clot, resulting in heart attack or stroke. So again, are saturated fats to blame? Or is this thinking a little bit skewed? In this episode, we are busting a cholesterol myth and revealing the whole truth about underlying causes of increased cholesterol in your blood. Is intake of dietary cholesterol one of them? We'll see. We often hear from doctors that cholesterol itself is very bad and should be treated with statin. This approach is totally out of date and no longer supported by recent scientific evidence. What is even more important, cholesterol should be seen as a symptom, not a disease. Let me give you a little spoiler. Consumption of dietary cholesterol has very little to do with increased bodily cholesterol. So if not eggs and saturated fat overall, let me tell you what may be an underlying cause of increased cholesterol in your blood. Number one, metabolic dysfunction. Number two, viral infection like H. pylori. Number three, underfunctioning thyroid. Number four, environmental toxins, especially heavy metals. Number five, gut dysbiosis. Number six, genetics. And number seven, trans fats. There is no doubt that trans fats increase cholesterol. Trans fats is a type of unsaturated fat where the most popular is margarine. Why you shouldn't eat it? Trans fats cause the cell to become very stiff which naturally happens when you age, but after eating trans fats, the process is accelerated. So your cells aging much quicker. But today I want to focus on gut health issues, as this is something that intrigues me the most. Before we dive in into the magical world of gut health, let me remind you what is LDL and HDL cholesterol, what is the difference between them and why cholesterol is not bad at all. Okay, so now let's tackle HDL and LDL, which is a common misconception about good and bad cholesterol. You have probably heard about HDL as a good cholesterol and LDL as a bad cholesterol. But funny, it's not even cholesterol. These are proteins. HDL stands for high density lipoprotein, so-called good cholesterol because it removes cholesterol from your arteries by carrying cholesterol back to your liver to be recycled. On the other hand, LDL stands for low density lipoprotein, aka bad cholesterol, because it transports your cholesterol from the liver to your tissues. But guys, in general, cholesterol is not bad. We need it, so why do we have cholesterol in our arteries? It works as a natural cure for inflammation and damage in your arteries. So every time when you damage a cell in your body by going to the gym and training hard, or you want to produce a new cell in your body, you need cholesterol to do so. Cholesterol plays very important role in your body. It is a structural molecule, which is essential for every cell membrane, even our brain. It is also used to make hormones like testosterone and cortisol, and also for uh, production of vitamins in our body. Finally, let's talk gut health. As I've just mentioned, LDL brings the cholesterol to the cell to cure it. Then it gets cut off from LDL and the smaller LDL particle comes back to the liver to be recycled. So how gut health is related to cholesterol? As a quick reminder, in our gut we have 100 trillion different types of bacteria and the highest concentration of immune cells. Your gut is immune system's first line of defense against all chemicals, bacteria, viruses and pathogens. So in fact, the food you ate and went to your intestine, it's still outside your body. That is why it's very important to have a very strong barrier which separates the inside world to the outside world. 
and also separates your gut bacteria from your immune cells. When your gut barrier is compromised, your immune cells start to attack the gut bacteria and kill it, which results in endotoxin being released, and endotoxin is a part of the bacteria membrane. So once again, when your gut barrier leaks, the immune cells from your inner side start to attack the gut bacteria which are outside in your gut. And what happens when the endotoxin is released? When endotoxin gets to your bloodstream, it binds with LDL particle. The smaller LDL particle, which was on its way to be recycled into the liver. Why endotoxin binds with LDL particle? Endotoxins freely running in our bloodstreams can be very dangerous and even fatal. So this is our body system to prevent it. So literally LDL particle soaks up the endotoxin. But there is a one complication. This binding happens in the very same place that LDL uses to come back to the liver to be recycled. But because of LDL has now the endotoxin attached to it, it cannot simply go back to the liver and it gets stuck into your bloodstream. And it's getting even more complicated. Guess what happens next? The endotoxin, which is bound to the LDL particle, is a signal for your immune cells that something is wrong, that we have a foreign invader on our territory. And then the immune cells started to attack it because they see the LDL and endotoxin together as a bacteria. But this is no longer living bacteria, this is still the LDL particle, so they cannot kill it. As a result, your immune cells start to release a little proteins, peptides, which get stuck onto the LDL particle, forming a plaque. So let's summarize and actually let's draw some conclusion. Saturated fat indeed increase the amount of LDL particles in your bloodstream, but this is nothing bad unless you're under chronic inflammation. So how to prevent it? You need to have a strong gut barrier. Your gut barrier is built from the substance called mucin. In order to produce mucin, your gut bacteria needs fuel. How to feed them? Answer is simple. Short chain fatty acids, which are generated from fermentable fiber, which you can find in foods like fruits, vegetables, mushrooms, sauerkraut, oats, barley, or bran. Okay, there is one question left unanswered. What causes your gut barrier to be permeable? Today, let's tackle this from a dietary perspective. Well, when you're eating a lot of refined sugars, refined carbohydrates, you feed the other type of your gut bacteria, aka your bad gut bacteria, which then overgrow, occupying the space in your gut. So if you have naturally more bad gut bacteria, naturally there is less space for good bacteria. Literally, you starve them, so they become to break down mucin the barrier of your gut, which then leads to inflammation. So guys, what causes high cholesterol in your blood? Impaired gut wall function, chronic inflammation, which is caused by overconsumption of refined sugars. That's it for this video. I hope you like it because I was very happy that I could record it, this for you. I'm so interested about gut health and if you do, comment below and we see you next Sunday. And one more thing, if you haven't already, consider subscribing because we do a Mythbuster just like this one and other health videos every week. See you next Sunday. Bye!